am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love me! It's a man. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Independence Day to you all. I'm Reverend Kelly Kincaid, the Senior Minister of Unity of Farmington Hills. I want to thank our music team for leading us in that opening congregational song. I Am a Friend of God is one of my favorite songs that we sing to usher in the spirit of worship, and that was the perfect song for us to sing today. I want to thank Nicholas, 
Marie, Michael, Carl Clace, and Lauren. And Lauren, thank you for providing the lyrics so we could sing along with you all. I'm going to take this time to share our Sunday announcements, and then we will continue with our service. I invite you all to join us for our Sunday fellowship gathering today after service at 11 a.m. Our Monday Zoom house party is tomorrow at 1 p.m. This is our time to check in, connect with each other, be inspired, and most of all, to laugh. <laughs> our weekly Bible study class is Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Bring your Bibles and join us for a deeper metaphysical stu study of Scripture. And our weekly meditation service is on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. In this sacred service, we go within and commune together in the presence of God. I want to thank everybody who showed up last week for our town hall meeting so that we could discuss our in-person services. We are going to start resuming our in-person services next Sunday at 11 a, I mean, uh, 10 a.m. So that will be next Sunday, July 11th at 10 a.m. If you are experiencing any COVID-19 symptoms during that time, or if you have been exposed to anybody who has COVID-19, we ask that you please stay at home. If you have a compromised immune system or if you're practicing social distancing, we ask that you wear a mask while you are at the church. And we ask that everybody respect each other by social distancing from those who are wearing masks and by refraining from hugging each other and getting too close to each other for too long. We're gonna slowly move into interacting uh, and spending time with each other at the church. But for now, let us just respect each other's space and, res and those who are wearing masks, let's make sure we keep distance from them. I will be one of them. <laughs> we will not have fellowship after, ch after church service in the social hall downstairs. However, we will be meeting briefly after service outside in the backyard. After uh, And also, starting next week, the youth Sunday service will be meeting at church at 10 a.m. every Sunday. This service is for all children ages 5 to 11. I'm excited about having, you ch having children at the church as well. For more information regarding the Sunday youth services, you may email Sharon Clays. The email is youth at unityfh.com. There will be no women's group meetings, critical conversations meetings, or trivia family night during the month of July and August. We are going to resume those activities in September after Labor Day. However, the men's group has decided to continue to meet through the summer. And the next meeting is at the church on July 17th, which is the third Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. The, there will be the men's group this month is doing a book discussion on the book Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. Men, you are all invited to participate in the meeting on the 17th. Whether you've read the book or not, it's going to be an interesting, interesting discussion. I've read the book and I really like that book. We're having Tai Chi at our church. So in two weeks, our first Tai Chi class begins. That is on Monday, July 19th at 6.30. It's a six-week class that will be on Mondays from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Tai Chi is a form of martial arts, but it's a slower form of martial arts. And this, this class will progress every week. And so that means it'll become more difficult every week. So if you join, if you show up in a class in the third week or the fourth week, expect to be doing some more difficult moves of Tai Chi. The instructor is Jeff Sotson. He has been doing martial arts for practicing martial, I mean, uh, Tai Chi for over 20 years. I'm excited to have him teach the class. And that there is a suggested love offering of $5. However, any love offering will be accepted for the Tai Chi classes. For more information about our activities, classes, group meetings, and events, please visit our website at unityfh.com. To sign up for our email blast, when you get to the home page, scroll down to the bottom and fill out that form and then hit the submit button. If you would like to become a member of our church, 
or if you need to renew your membership for this year with our church. Click on the, when you get to the homepage on the website, click on the About Us link and fill out that membership form that is under that link. Hit the, the submit button and you will have been a new member of our church or you, have, you will have renewed your membership at our church. If you would like to schedule an appointment to talk to me or for prayer, please email me at seniorminister at unityfh.com or call me at 248-737-9191. My office hours are Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you call and I don't answer, please leave a message because I will call you back. You may also email your prayer request to our prayer ministry. Now that email is prayerchaplains at unityfh.com. After your requests have been prayed over, they will be sent to Silent Unity to be held in prayer for another 30 days. I want to thank our prayer chaplains, Eileen Lindbergh and Roxanne Berry, for your sacred service to our spiritual community. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. This concludes our announcements for today. So now as we join our music team in singing Shirley to Presence, let us quiet down and open up our hearts and minds to hear the daily word and for our opening prayer. The Daily Word for today, Sunday, July 4th, 2021, is freedom. The affirmation reads, In thought, word, and action, I celebrate my freedom. Let's affirm that together. In thought, word, and action, I celebrate my freedom. And the message reads, There are many ways to feel free. I may work hard to become financially free. I may plan trips so I can freely explore the world. I may commit to learning for intellectual freedom or exercise my body for greater freedom of movement. Even as I do my work in the world to know freedom, I remember that I am always free at the level of spirit. No situation or circumstance has power over me. Every day and in every area of my life, I live from divine nature where I am wholly and completely free. Through my inner powers of understanding and faith, I recognize and embrace empowering beliefs. My spiritual gifts of strength and release keep me on course and help me free myself from habits that derail my spiritual growth. Through God within, I am grateful to be free. And the scripture for today's daily word comes from Galatians, it's chapter 5, verse 1. For freedom, Christ has set us free. I love that. Let us pray. So I invite you to gently close your eyes with me and take a deep breath. And now just allow your attention to float down into the center of your chest, which is your heart center. And just feel the presence of peace in that area in your chest. 
right in the center. Allow yourself to tune into a feeling of love as well. And as we acknowledge that peace and love that dwells within us, we also acknowledge and affirm that there is only one power and one presence that is active in our lives and in the universe, and that's God the Good Omnipotent, the true source of everything. God, as we tap into the feeling of peace and love and freedom within, we know that we are connecting to you the absolute good that dwells within us, making us absolute good as you are absolute good. We thank you for blessing this worship service, for blessing our country, for bringing us into the consciousness of feeling truly free, for opening up our minds, our hearts, and our souls to hear the message that you have for us today and for leading us in going out and being expressions of that mess message in this world. In the mighty name and nature of that indwelling Christ, we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. And now let us know our statement of being together. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And now let us affirm our growth affirmation together, which truly is working. Together, we give thanks for our expansive congregation that fills our halls, sanctuary, and classrooms with seekers of unity truth, fills our hearts with love and joy, and provides us with all of the necessary resources to co-create a loving and compassionate spirit-filled world. Thank you for affirming that with me. I'm excited about getting back into church next Sunday for our Sunday service. We're going to have our first special song entitled Don't Give Up. It'll be led by Lorne, and then I will be back with our message for today. This time your heart said it's had enough Sick and tired of everything that some has done Don't want to move on just playing games Praying on somehow that your life will change When you feel you don't know what to do Stuck inside This maze you can't go through But don't give up Help is surely on its way And don't give up The dark is breaking in today And just keep on
Wow, that was a powerful song that you led, Lauren. It was a powerful performance. Thank you all for the performance. And it was an even more powerful video. As I was watching the young man who was running, it hurt himself. And then his father ran with him, said, you don't have to do this. And when he said, I do, his father said, we'll do this together. And then watching the football player carrying that young man on his back and having his coach encourage him all the way. He was only in that scene supposed to go 50 yards. And he ended up going all the way into the end zone. And that reminds me of how my father is that with me, whether he walk, goes with me all the way to step of the way or encourages me. And then it may be even more aware of how our spiritual father, how God is with us, whether we're aware that God is with us, and feel God's presence when we know we can do it. or we, And we feel God's presence in those moments where we don't think we can do it. God is always there with us every step of the way. Every step of the way. And so thank you for that song. Thank you for the performance. And thank you for the video. It was amazing as usual. Now I'm feeling really touched today. So I may be crying throughout this, <laughs> this talk. Just know it. So... This is, like I said, Independence Day, or it's considered the 4th of July or July 4th. It is a federal holiday that the United States, that we celebrate commemorating the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July 4th, 1776. At that point, the Continental Congress declared that the 13 American colonies that had gathered together at that time were no longer subject or subordinate to the monarch of Britain, which was um, King George III, and were united, free, and independent states. Now, they had already voted this in on July 2nd, but it became it was declared officially declared their Independence Day on July 4th, which is why we celebrate it on July 4th. And it's interesting because even though the country is celebrating our independence. We are truly not free and independent within the interactions that we have in this community, in this country, because some of us are still oppressed in this country. But it's interesting because I love what Martin Luther King's quote says when he says, oppressed people can't, cannot remain oppressed forever. The yearning for freedom eventually manifests itself. So what I'm celebrating along with our country's independence, I'm celebrating the independence of all of the people who live in the United States as well. That God is leading us forward because those of us black and brown and even especially the Native Americans whose land this originally belonged to before it was stolen from them. We all are still moving towards celebrating our freedom. And that in itself, because of spiritual law, will bring us all into interacting and living together as free, independent individuals in this world. So the title of uh, the talk that I, uh, um, as I was meditating on it, came, came to me 
um, as I remember that July represents spiritual understanding. And spiritual understanding goes into a deeper metaphysical spiritual awareness and knowing of what is the spiritual law, what is going on in our lives and what is going on in our minds. The underlining truth in all situations and circumstances and tr also the underlining understanding and meaning of spiritual scripture. So there's a true meaning of independence and freedom. And the title of my talk today is true independence and freedom. And, and when I thought about that, I thought about Ernest Holmes expression of freedom. He says the divine plan is one of freedom. The inherent nature of man is ever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. And I love what it says in the declaration of independence. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. All men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it is not fully manifesting in the United States right now, but I trust in God. I trust in God that we as a, as a com country, as a nation, nation will move towards what the spirit of the Declaration of Independence was speaking. The truth that the truth of the Declaration of Independence will be manifested in our country. So there is there and, and also with the Pledge of Allegiance, I remember learning the Pledge of Allegiance as, and also and part of it says that we are one nation, individual, individual with liberty and justice for all. That we pledge allegiance to the flag that represents that one nation, indivi indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And I remember that because it was a little, took a minute for me to be able to say indivisible <laughs> when I was little. So on the one hand, as a country, we are physically free. But on the other hand, as a spiritual collective consciousness, we are still in a bondage. We are in we are still in bondage of human materialistic consciousness. And it is time and we are moving towards freedom. We are moving towards true liberate, true independence and freedom. The scriptures that I was led to use for today that I've been studying for this week come from Galatians. It's chapter six, verse 13 through 15. And I'm, re I'm going to read this from the New Living, New Living Translation. For you have been called to live in freedom, brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you all are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. God, I thank you for blessing these scriptures. I thank you for blessing me and opening me up to be the voice box to your message. So I allow my human to decrease. And I open up and invite spirit to increase, the Christ to increase in me. Let me be just the voice to your message that I don't filter. I just freely share the spirit of what it is you are bringing forth in me today. Thank you, God. Amen. So this is awesome because in scripture, in Galatians, when Paul is talking to the Galatians, he, he is saying, that are true, that we have been called to live in freedom. We are called to live in freedom. And then he says, Bro my brothers and sisters, which, which is acknowledging that not only are we called to live in freedom, we are called to live in freedom as brothers and sisters in Christ. The only true way to move into a state of freedom is to shift the way we look at things, to shift our focus, to shift the consciousness in which we are living in. True freedom, true independence can only come from a relationship with God and true freedom and true independence 
uh, 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 true independence and true freedom can only come w- uh, with the relationship with God that we dwell in as we live in the consciousness of spirit. And then when you go deeper, when you go deeper, true independence and freedom manifest when you live in a state of love. Love is the essence of oneness. It's feeling one and being and experiencing one with all of life, with the, sp- the spirit of God within you and the spirit of God within everyone else and the spirit of God in this world. When you are fully, truly independent and truly free, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Your life is run and dependent on God's expression in you. And so where it says in Ernest Holmes understanding or quote, the inherent nature of man is ever seeking, seeking to express itself in terms of freedom because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. What I love is, is that this means that we are moving into the birthright of our spiritual aspect, the spirit in us. We are fully spirit and we are fully human. And we are here to live in the freedom of being fully self-expressed in our spirit in order to manifest that in this world. We are spiritual beings living in a spiritual existence, governed by spiritual laws, here to be a spiritual expression in the um, manifestation of this human earth. And so when we go further down, it says, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Now, what I love about what Charles Fillmore says about freedom. Charles Fillmore says that freedom is the quality or state of being without thought or or restraint. Bonded thought of restraint, bondage, limitation, or repression is having a sense of complete well-being. He says it is the result result of regulating one's life according to principle, which is God's law, which is the spirit of God inside of you. And he says it's not, not according to what anyone else thinks or says. So what does this mean? This means that it is time for each and every one of us to go deeper into strengthening and cultivating a stronger relationship with God, with the Christ inside of you, that that Christ in you, that is your hope for glory. And that as you do so, you will move into a space of not using your spiritual freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. That's what it says here. Don't use your Freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another. When we realize that what we do to ourselves, we do to someone else. And what we do to someone else, we literally do to ourselves because we are one in the spirit of God, in the spirit of Christ. When we realize that we are actually Christed beings, meaning that we inside of each and every one is the son of God is the Christ idea of how we were created to live in this earth school is the ideas and principles that Jesus taught on loving each other and seeing in you, the Christ in you and seeing in me, the Christ in me and it acting as if we see it and know that it lives within each other, acting as if what I do to you, I do to God and what I do to me, I do to God and living from that consciousness. And when we do that, there's no part of us that will want to do anything opposite because we know we will be hurting ourselves in the process. And so as we move forward, I'm listening. In this day of celebration of the Independence Day, what I celebrate is that we, and what I see, instead of getting upset with and resisting the idea by, 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 Focusing on the idea that black and brown people in the United States are not fully experiencing the rights that we have to life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice. That we are not truly living in the United States as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Instead of dwelling on that, what we do is take that spiritual imagination that we have 
Take our spiritual faculties. Take, take the spiritual principle that we are as the expression of love and visualize what we'd like to see in this world and celebrate the moments of improvement, even if they're slow, incremental movements forward, to celebrate each movement forward and to continue to seek out areas in, in this spiritual process where God is moving in us and God is moving in this world. But we have to see it. We have to be it. And as we see it and be it, our consciousness expands out to the point where it touches other people's consciousness. You can only do it by healing through the heart, linking the mind and the consciousness of the mind to the presence and the love and the presence of God in your heart. And when you live from that space, you are celebrating true independence. Because you know that there is nothing that anybody can do, nothing anybody can say, nothing, no circumstance can take away your conscious awareness of the love of God in you. You realize that you are still free to think however you want to think. You are still free to say whatever it is you want to say. You are still free to feel and believe that inside of your mind that is in alignment with God. You are still free to live so deeply in the awareness of Jesus' teachings that it opens up a realm and a world for you that is truly independent and free. And I challenge us today to live from that space of being truly independent and free, which means that we have to open up our consciousness to shift from what we see in the physical world using the eyes of the flesh and shift into what God has for us to see in the spiritual world through our relationship with God, using the eyes to see from spirit, opening up our spiritual sight, opening up our spiritual understanding, asking God to show us another way, asking us to show us the higher way, asking us to show us the truth in every situation, asking, us to show, asking God to show us how to be, demonstrate, and express the truth in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls, in our bodies, and then go out and live it in this world. Truly independent and truly free. You are only restricted and restrained when you let the world restrain you. If you don't feel restricted in the consciousness of God, you are not. And those people who feel that they have to uh, use their physical power to run over others, they're not physically, they're not free. Now, they may be physically free in this world, but they're not spiritually free. They're spiritually in, they're in spiritual bondage to their own mind. We are here to open ourselves up and to release any aspects in our consciousness that is, that is in spiritual bondage, in spiritual bondage to the physical world. And what I mean by that is that it is, spirit cannot manifest in our lives. Spirit cannot express in our lives if our focus is fully on the human realm, if our focus is fully on the materialistic things of this life, if our focus is fully on what other people are doing, if our focus is fully on what the world is doing, if our focus is fully on the circumstances of our life, if our focus is fully on our own body, and even when we are in pain and illness, if our focus is only restricted to that, we are fully focused on that. You cannot allow spirit to move in your life. It is you're in spiritual bondage. It is not until we open our eyes and have the eyes to see and the ears to hear the presence of God moving and having its being in our lives, in our consciousness, in our bodies, in our souls, that we are opening ourselves up to true independence. True independence is on a spiritual level. It is not on a physical level. So even though in this world we are physically free in the United States and a powerful nation, a powerful, independent, free nation, our consciousness is still restricted. Our consciousness is still restricted. But the beautiful thing that I love is that the way we can release the consciousness of the United States is one person at a time. We move into our heart, even when you have those who are out there in leadership roles who are seemingly creating agitation in the world to create a divide and to, to, to create a, a, a confusion and to try to take over control. We don't have to, and see others as enemies, see black and brown people as enemies and want to keep us 
oppressed in this world, those of us who are on the other end of that do not have to see them as our enemies. We can see them as brothers and sisters. uh, Paul says in verse 13 of Galatians, for you have been called to live in freedom, brothers and sisters. We can still live in our minds in a state of freedom, in your consciousness, in a state of freedom. You have control over your own consciousness. You have dominion over how you see things. You can see it from a deeper perspective and you can see that no matter what another person is trying to do, they do not have dominion over your consciousness. You can have your true liberation and true independence by stepping into spiritual dependence on God. It moves you into true independence and freedom in this world. What happens is you move into the true what verse 14 says for the whole law can be summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. That no matter what someone says, no one, matter what someone does, no matter how someone tries to restrain, we can still live in the true essence of independence and freedom by loving any way. Love is the most powerful way to walk in true independence and true freedom because you walk in a state of peace. There's no part of you that is warring against another part of you and reflecting itself in the outside world. That no matter what's going on in the outside world, you are tuned in to the consciousness of Christ in you. And as you tune into the consciousness of Christ in you, you move into the true independence and freedom that you are. You take control over your mind and stay in a space of peace, no matter what, because you know God is moving in this world. God is manifesting freedom in this world, in God's divine timing, in God's divine way, and in God's divine order. And we have to align ourselves to that divine manner, to that divine way, and to that divine order by having faith and having trust. That God knows what God is doing. And by loving each other, no matter what shows up. Because when you move into verse 15, if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. What happens is if we spend our time resisting, angry, biting, fighting each other, what happens is that focus that is the sinful nature rules out the experience of love and feeling of joy and feeling of peace inside. So you live in a spirit of turmoil within yourselves. I say, let's live in a space of independence and freedom. I say, let's live in a space of joy and love. I say, let's celebrate today's Independence Day by celebrating true independence and freedom. I say, let's walk in a spirit of love and oneness and unity. And as we celebrate, we celebrate the oneness, the love and the unity that exists in each other, whether the person or whether we are demonstrating it or not. I say that we celebrate it anyway and that we continue to move towards celebrating it through our actions in this world. That the most powerful way to celebrate true independence and true freedom freedom is to live as if you are independent and free live as if you are independent and free in the spirit of God live as though you know God dwells within you and you know God dwells within the other person to live in the presence of God that no matter what's going on in your life you can expand it to a greater awareness of peace and love and joy and prosperity if you take control of your mind and step into a deeper understanding of what true life, true liberty, and the pursuit of true happiness is. It is not going after the outside physical things of this world. It is going within and going after a deeper relationship with God. And as you open up inside, you will open up outside. As above, so below. Jesus said that he came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. And the only way to have life and have life more abundantly, which means living in true independence and freedom, is to have a life that is lived in the presence of God, that is lived in a relationship with God, that is lived in the true independence and true freedom that we are here to be. And that is an expression of love and oneness. So today, as we celebrate Independence Day, No matter what race you are, let's celebrate the true independence and freedom of living in spirit 
Let's celebrate the true independence of free and freedom of living in oneness with one another, serving one another in the presence of love being and the best way to serve one another is to extend love and light to each other. No matter how anyone is behaving towards you, just be the expression of love and light and then allow God to show you if there is anything else that is yours to do as God does God's part in your life. That is the true way to live in independence and freedom. Let's do that together. Let's celebrate this independence day by stepping into our true independence and freedom by moving deeper into a stronger relationship with God and being the experience and the expression of that relationship with God in this world, as we interact with each other in this world, the best way to do it is to just be the vibration of love. Just be the vibration of love and oneness and watch it shift the vibration of your world, your inner world and the world that you experience outside. Thank you, God, for your mighty message and for this Independence Day that we celebrate today. Amen. And so now as we move into our Giving Righteously segment of our service, which is our spiritual independence and freedom, the expression of our spiritual independence and freedom, let us affirm our divine uh, love offering. But before we do so, just bring in your mind the donation that you are being led to give today to Unity of Farmington Hills. And take a deep breath. And now let us affirm our love offering blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. And for those of you who are giving online, you may give to unityfh.com. Go to, go to that web, our website. Click on the donate button on the homepage. And when, you, when it opens up, you may give through credit card, PayPal, or a debit card. If you're sending in your payment, you may send it to Unity of Farmington Hills, 32500 West 13 Mile Road, Farmington Hills, Michigan, 48334. And remember, when you make your purchases online, go to smile.amazon.com and, and make sure your account is linked up to Unity of Farmington Hills because every time you make a purchase through smile.amazon.com, Amazon sends proceeds as a donation to Unity of Farmington Hills. So you're giving while you're buying. <laughs> For those of you who are contributing to the Angel Fund, that new benevolent fund that we started to help those in our spiritual community who may be in financial need, when you go to the website after you've made your donation, you can also go back in through that donate button, find the Angel Fund link, click on that, and you can make your donation through there. And if you're sending in a check for the Angel Fund, make sure to designate Angel Fund on your check when you send it in. For those of you who may want to request assistance from the Angel Fund, please email me at seniorminister at unityfh.com so that you can get the re request for uh, assistance application. And we'll fill it out. We will, this is a confidential process that the prayer chaplains and I uh, run. We will fill it out. We will guide you through the process and we will see what we can do. Oh my goodness. I am so excited about where we are going as a church. I, I, I'm blown away that U of H growth affirmation and our intentions to give love and be expressions of love is truly, truly working. And I speak prosperity in all of our lives and in the world today. Thank you, God. Amen. And so now we are going to have our second special song entitled greater. It will be led by Laurel. And then I will be back with our closing prayer segment. I'll see you in a little bit.
What an amazing song. Greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. Oh my goodness. I love every part of that. I love the message of that song. I love the performance. Thank you, Laura, for leading that. And I love the video. Thank you, Lauren, for the video. I love when you put sign language in the videos. It was amazing as usual. So thank you to Nicholas, to Laurel, to Bernard, to Marie, to K Michael, to Carl Clace, and to Lauren for the awesome way that you have kept us going as a music ministry throughout this COVID experience. It was amazing and it always has been. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to let us do our prayer, our virtual prayer circle. And then we'll do our prayer for protection and then we'll close out. So let us just gently take a deep breath. And then as you exhale, let your focus flow down into your heart center. Gently close your eyes with me. Bring forth the names of those who you'd like pray to pray with today as we stand in the gap for them. And go ahead and speak them out into this prayer, virtual prayer circle. Knowing that even though we are in independent, in different locations, standing independently, we are one in spirit and so God as these names come forth we thank you for the way in which you are moving in the lives of those who we're praying with aligning their consciousness with the spirit of truth with the spirit of Christ within them with your presence inside of them allowing them to see and feel and be the experience of your presence and in that moving them into a spiritual understanding of true independence and true freedom that they may be independent and moved away from this experience and circumstance that is holding them down as you move them forward and we thank you God for also blessing everyone who is here in this service today and for strengthening everyone's consciousness to move into a deeper awareness of your presence that we may walk as true expressions of independence and freedom. I thank you for everyone who helped me to put this service together and who continue to help me throughout this whole time of this COVID experience. Thank you for blessing each and every life of everyone in the spiritual community of Unity of Farmington Hills and everyone connected to spirit to Unity of Farmington Hills. And God, thank you for blessing everyone in the world as we walk celebrating today, not just our physical freedom and independence, but our spiritual independence and freedom as well. Thank you, God. Amen. Now let us affirm our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you who show up for our fellowship gathering today. It will be the last one, the last Zoom one that we have for our church service. And so I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about being in church next week, 10 a.m. Join us for church service at our church, Unity of Farmington Hills, 32500 West 13 Mile Road. And for those of you who cannot join us, we're going to do our best to have to do it live um, online as well. So I am Reverend Kelly Kincaid. This is the last time that I say goodbye. Let us close by singing the prayer for the peace song, rather. Enjoy your Independence Day. Enjoy your life. Know that I love you and God does too. Bye-bye.